Welcome to Japan Issues. Interview. Kim Hyun Wei. North Korea afraid of secrets coming out if abductees are released. Japanese abductees Megumi Yokota and Iako Taguchi are still alive. And Japan should keep pushing for direct talks, says former North Korean agent Kim Hyun Wei. We would like to share the Senki Shimbun report, September 27, 2022. Kim Hyun Wei. A former North Korean agent who in Pyongyang had contacts with abductee Ziyako Taguchi, now 67 years old, and Megumi Yokota, now 57 years old, and who later carried out the 1987 Korean air flight bombing, gave an interview to the Senki Shimbun in Seoul on September 15. In the interview Kim Hyun Wei stated that she is convinced that the two Japanese abductees are alive and that North Korea has alleged their deaths because the two women are aware of the internal secrets and weaknesses of North Korea and the leader's family. The Pyongyang government is afraid that the secrets would be made public if they return the abductees, she said. Kim Jong-il, who is General Secretary of the Workers' Party of Korea, WPK, acknowledged and apologized for the abductions of Japanese nationals at the first summit meeting between Japan, Prime Minister Junichiro Koizumi, and North Korea, Kim Jong-il, in 2002. Kim Hyun-wei recalled her surprise when she came across the news in South Korea, where she was living at the time. She told the Senki Shimbun to protect Kim Jong-il's authority. I never thought he would admit to a crime committed at his direction. She judged at the time that Kim Jong-il admitted the abductions in order to receive huge economic support from Japan, while North Korea was in the midst of economic distress. At the time he also shifted the blame to some special agencies in North Korea, alleging they had carried out the acts of abduction on their own. Regarding the eight abductees who were declared dead by Kim Jong-il's regime in 2002, Kim Hyung-wei explained that they had learned about North Korea's secrets and weaknesses. The Pyongyang regime was particularly afraid of the truth about Kim Jong-il's family leaking out, she said. Noting that even North Koreans who worked for the Kim family were forced to live in isolation from the outside world afterwards in order to protect the family's secrets. Regarding Megumi Yokota, Kim Hyun-wei repeated previously released information that the Japanese abductee taught Japanese to the Kim family. Specifically, the information suggests that Ko Yong-wei, the biological mother of current General Secretary Kim Jong-un and his sister, Deputy Party Secretary Kim Yo-jong, was a Korean resident in Japan who wanted her son and daughter to learn about Japan. The former agent suggested that Megumi was chosen as the most suitable candidate for the job because she was the youngest and quietest of the Japanese abductees. Kim Hyun-wei explained that North Korea's reason for declaring Yako Taguchi dead was largely due to the fact that Taguchi knew the former North Korean agent, Kim Hyun-wei, well. Pyongyang's concern, she thought, would be that Taguchi could be a living witness to North Korea's role in the Korean air bombing incident. North Korea claimed that Taguchi was married to another abductee, Tadaki Hara and died in a traffic accident in 1986. However, Kim Hyun-wei related a contradictory set of facts. Based on eyewitness accounts of abductees who had returned to Japan and information she had obtained herself, she said. Taguchi had in fact married a South Korean abductee who belonged to the North Korean Ministry of People's Armed Forces, now Ministry of Defense. In 1987, Kim Hyun-wei said, Taguchi and her husband were living in a facility controlled by that ministry, so she could not have died in 1986. The former North Korean terrorist stressed that the Japanese government and the Fumio Kishida administration should keep knocking on the door of Pyongyang seeking negotiations. The two neighbors, she said, should not give up trying, even if it seems difficult to succeed. Addressing the two governments, she stated, 
China, North Korea and Russia are united as one and joining forces. South Korea and Japan have to join forces and become closer to each other to counter that. As liberal democracies, the two countries share values for the future. I think we must improve our relations more. The general public in South Korea, even children, like Japanese animation and music. Many of them have traveled to Japan. Many people in Japan also like K-pop, Korean dramas, and Korean food. So I don't think political leaders should stay in the past. More specifically on the issue of the North's abduction of Japanese citizens, Kim hyung hoois advice was that the government of Japan should continue to make demands. In her view, that should even start with informal family visits in North Korea, on the premise that North Korea does not want to return victims who have learned the regime's secrets. According to her memoir and other documents, Kim hyun wei was born into the family of a North Korean diplomat and selected to work for an agency of the Workers' Party of Korea while she was a university student. For one year and eight months from 1981, she learned Japanese language and customs from Japanese abductee Yako Taguchi. Kim was responsible for carrying out the Korean Air Flight 858 bombing in November 1987 which killed 115 passengers and crew. At the time she was using a forged passport in the name of Mayumi Hachiya. She was taken into custody and sentenced to death in South Korea, but was later released under a special pardon in 1990. She currently lives in South Korea. That's all, from the Sankey Shimbun Report via Japan Forward.